That appears to be it. It's now time for members' statements. The member for Toronto St. Paul's. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, I held my first tenants and housing town hall in Toronto St. Paul's. More than 60 per cent of my community are tenants, and in my riding, the housing crisis is the number one issue I hear about. Residents told me they're scared that an above the guideline increase will push them out of their homes. Tenants also live with the anxiety that they could be renovated at any time. They don't understand why their buildings are not accessible and why the government will not improve the AODA and building code requirements. Tenants deserve better. At my town hall, a young man spoke about his experience of reintegration after being incarcerated. He said that as, a, as the province closes halfway houses, young people are released from jails without any social supports, which increases the chance of them reoffending. Young people deserve a fair chance to turn their lives around, and having secure housing is imperative to this. As a lifelong renter and a person who has experienced precarious housing myself, I stand with the tenants in saying that we desperately need more real affordable housing. Ensuring safe and affordable housing is a first step in addressing inequity in society. Affordable housing is linked to many other factors that impact the lives of Ontarians. Housing is a public health issue, an economic security issue, and access to transit, social services, and education issue. And a lack of affordable housing hits already marginalized populations even harder. The government must remember housing is not a frill, housing is a basic right. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Northumberland, Peter Brosso. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure uh, to rise today to inform the House that April is Be a Donor Month in Ontario. This is a month in which all Ontarians are encouraged to show their support for organ and tissue donation by registering to be a donor. Today, I'm asking all my colleagues in this House to join me in taking a lead in inspiring every Ontarian to save a life to be a donor. It's important to know, Mr. Speaker, that a single organ donation can save the lives of up to eight people wow. and significantly enhance the lives of up to 75 others through the gift of tissue. The Trillium Gift of Life Network is a patient-focused agency of the Government of Ontario that is responsible for planning, promoting, and supporting organ and tissue donation across Ontario. They also work tirelessly to improve the system so that more lives can be saved. We're joined today by members from Trillium Gift of Life Network here in the gallery. Currently, there are over 1,600 Ontarians waiting for life-saving organ transplant, 39 of whom, Mr. Speaker, live in my riding of Northumberland, Peterborough South. Mr. Speaker, sadly, every day, every three days, someone dies a very preventable death waiting for a life-saving transplant. In my riding of Northumberland, Peterborough South, I'm proud that over 40% of residents have already registered to be a donor. Today, I'm issuing the Mayor's Challenge, asking each mayor in my riding to promote Be a Donor and ask that every one of them encourage everyone in their community to register. How you can register, go online and visit beadonor.ca. Create your own campaign, minds forward slash campaign forward slash MPP David Pacini. I'm also challenging all of my colleagues in this place to go online create your own profile, and challenge the mayors in your communities to do the same thing. In closing, Mr. Speaker, I would like to encourage every resident of Ontario to spend two minutes to register online in your, and consent to donate today. I would also ask every resident to spread the word that donating can save a life. Here, here. Donate here, here. today. Well Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today alongside my NDP colleagues from Windsor Tecumseh and Essex to show solidarity with the 1,500 workers at the FCA Windsor Assembly Plant who learned that they will be losing their jobs in September, and the 9,000 additional workers at feeder plants and related businesses across the region. This news has devastated our community. Everyone in Windsor Essex knows someone that works at Windsor Assembly. This weekend, I spoke with workers, and they all asked me the same thing. What can the provincial government do to support them? There are definitely steps that the Ford government 
government can take to save jobs. They could create an auto strategy, which we have called for consistently. They could work with FCA, Unifor, and the workers to secure a new product for WAP to build on their full flex line. And they could reinstate the EV incentive program that they hastily cancelled, which encouraged consumers to choose green vehicle <laughs> options like the Pacifica Hybrid, boosting those sales. Thanks to the incredible advocacy of Windsor West Member of Parliament Brian Massey, the federal government has now included the Pacifica Hybrid on a list of green vehicles eligible for rebates. The Ford government needs to step up and do the same provincially. We have a lot of options, and we can't afford to do nothing. The Ford government needs to take real action, not just offer lip service during this time of uncertainty for Windsor and Essex. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Brampton South. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to, to celebrate the start of Sikh Heritage Month uh, in April. And April is a very special time for, for Sikhs across this country uh, because April, uh, specifically April 13th, is the day that we celebrate Masaki, which is the founding uh, of the Khalsa and also the day uh, that we were initiated with the five uh, articles of faith. Uh, over 500,000 Sikhs uh, live across Canada and contribute to every aspect uh, of ca Canadian society and very much a proud part of Canadian heritage. And one of those individuals and parts of history that I want to uh, highlight today is Private Buckham Singh. Private Buckham Singh was the first Sikh to fight uh, for Canada in World War I, uh, who died fighting uh, for this country. And it was uh, great to see his sacrifice being recognized by uh, the Peel School Board uh, this past week by naming a school after him. So I want to commend. <laughs> so I want to. I want to commend uh, my uh, colleague, uh, the Ward's 9 and 10 school trustee, uh, for initiating that and having this important piece of uh, Canadian history realized within our schools. And I also want to uh, let everyone know that uh, SICS will be celebrating uh, Sikh Heritage Month and with Khalsa Day parades across this province uh, in Toronto on uh, April 28th and in Malton on uh, May 5th. So I ask that the entire House join the community and celebrate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Windsor, Tecumseh. Good afternoon, Speaker. You've heard the devastating news that hit my community hard late last week. Minivan sales have slumped. The Fiat Chrysler Corporation wants to correct the market and lower the inventory. They see the easiest way of doing that is to eliminate the third shift at the Windsor Assembly Plant. 1,500 direct jobs are in jeopardy and could be, could be gone come September if sales don't improve. The company had other options. They could lower the price on the vehicles or offer 0% interest on new car sales, and maybe they will in the days ahead. That's their choice. The Premier told the Windsor workers he's standing with them and will fight tooth and nail to protect their jobs. I take the Premier at his word, Speaker. So today, I'm asking the Premier to do what he said he'd do, to show he's actually fighting for these jobs and standing up for Ontario's automotive manufacturing industry. In order to boost sales and stimulate the demand for Windsor-built vehicles, will the Premier place an order today for 1,500 or more new Windsor-built minivans? Speaker, you were here. It wasn't that many years ago, during another period of slumping automotive sales, a previous government in Ontario did exactly that. Various ministries, health units and conservation authorities and so on use minivans. There's no reason why these vehicles shouldn't be built in Ontario. Our government should be buying the cars we build here in Ontario. If we're open for business, we should be doing business with our own automotive manufacturers. In other words, Speaker, to the Premier, as we said in Windsor years ago, buy the cars your neighbours helped to build. Thank you. I recognize the member for Thunder Bay, Superior North. I wanted to seek a unanimous consent to, to make a statement today on behalf of the member for Don Valley East. Thunder Bay Superior North is seeking the unanimous consent of the House. 
to deliver a statement on behalf of the member for Don Valley East. Agreed? Agreed. Thunder Bay Superior North. My speaker, thank you, my colleagues. Uh, of all the decisions that have been made by this government, the one that continues to strike me as the most cruel is the decision to end the basic income research pilots. For the thousands of people who result who benefited from this program, a thousand of which came from my area of Thunder Bay, the ending of the pilot is pushing them back into poverty, dashing their hopes of a real opportunity to build their lives up once again. The basic income pilot allowed the participants to seek higher education, improve their living situation, eat healthy food once again, and begin to change the cycle that left them in poverty in the first place. <clears throat> Speaker, I have example upon example of my constituents on, on the program who told me that being on the pilot allowed them to dream of a better life in the future as they, as they worked their way through the opportunity presented by this forward-thinking research project. There was no question in my mind that the government was callously short-sighted when they decided to end the basic income pilot, which is why I'm calling on them today to reverse that decision and let the pilot run its three-year course. There is much we have already learned from the, from the people on this program, and it is my belief that the completion of the pilot would provide us with incredibly useful analysis and insight into the keys to ending poverty in the province, something I would like to believe that all parties in this legislature would be equal, equally eager to find out. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. I want to congratulate two extraordinary athletes from Burlington who had the experience of a lifetime when they won several medals at the 2019 Special Olympics World Summer Games in Abu Dhabi United Arab Emirates. Sarah Lynn Lisi, a 31-year-old gymnast, placed first and second in 10 events speaker. Sarah is an 18-year-old and participated previously in the Canadian Summer Special Olympics in both Vancouver and Nova Scotia. She says the experience has met she, she has met many new friends and developed new skills. Connor Joseph Mahoney is an 18-year-old and is a competitive swimmer. I had the pleasure of meeting him and his father, Tom Mahoney, who was a swim coach for the Special Olympics when they came into my Burlington office to pick up some Ontario to take with them to Abu Dhabi. Connor's favorite events are the butterfly back, backstroke and the crawl, and he is fast speaker. Connor has won many medals in the qualifying Special Olympics here in Canada, and in his first trip to the world, he placed second in the 50-meter butterfly, participating and placing in six events. I know I can speak for everyone in this chamber when I say congratulations to Sarah and Connor on their excellent performances at the World Summer Games. More than 45,000 Canadian children, youth and adults with an intellectual disability participated in programs run with the support of local support clubs across the, across the country. They are supported by a network of 21,000 volunteers. Can you imagine, Speaker? These Canadians are committed to helping accomplish something truly remarkable. Thank you so much, Speaker. I wish I had more time to go on, but uh, with another shout out to them. I'm so proud of them. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Essex. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. I rise today on behalf of the constituents of my riding of Essex. Shocked but not surprised, Speaker. Last week, the, uh, the Doug Ford government uh, announced that it was going to spend $1.2 billion on 123 various infrastructure projects around the province of Ontario. Conspicuous in its absence was the Highway 3 project that, that would be completed or needs to be completed from Essex to Leamington, linking up that vital route to the Herb Gray Parkway, a route that has an uh, enormous amount of uh, traffic and volume, a difference of volume with heavy industrial, agricultural traffic, and then your daily commuters that are working their way to the feeder plants and the, the tier one plants, automotive plants in Windsor and Essex County. There has been an enormous amount of accidents on that, on that roadway. It needs to be widened. That volume of traffic makes that roadway unsafe, and it is the provincial government's responsibility to finish that roadway. Speaker, during the election, the Premier came down and made that commitment. He said he was going to immediately finish that roadway immediately. Well, we've seen him act with the immediacy when it came to putting beers in convenience stores. We've seen him act with immediacy to put uh, $1 beer on the shelves. But when it comes to the lives and health and safety of the people in my riding, he's nowhere to be found. Speaker, it's obvious now that it wasn't just a broken promise. He would say anything to get elected in that riding. It's unbelievable, Speaker. We call on this provincial government to do the right thing, finish that roadway. I've seen it happen before. We've seen commitments from the previous government. They didn't do it. They didn't honour uh, Bruce Crozier's legacy, a man that you sat with, Speaker, that you know very 
very well, fought for that project. We want to see this government, or they're going to suffer the same fate as the Liberals did down in southwestern Ontario and be vanquished from uh, any riding that, uh, that they make promises towards. Speaker, thank you. Member statements. Member for Oakville. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this past week was the uh, annual Oakville Chamber of Commerce Award Business Awards Dinner held with the local Rotary Club. The Oakville Chamber of Commerce is the fifth largest chamber of commerce in the province and provides local members with the opportunity to collaborate, network, and share ideas in a social setting. Their Business Excellence Dinner event takes the time to recognize the great work of local business leaders and companies in Oakville that help contribute to our local economy. I have to say the event was fantastic, but there was one common theme I heard over and over and over again from business leaders. They are very, the business leaders are very focused and very excited by what our government is doing with the Open for Business changes being proposed by our government. People were very happy to hear our government's plan to reduce regulations by 25% and are excited to see that we are working hard to ensure Ontario becomes a more competitive jurisdiction and the economic engine of Canada again. I'd like to extend my congratulations to all the award winners from last week. Geotab for the Business Icon Award, Maycourt Club of Oakville for the Charity Nonprofit of the Year Award, Oakville Soccer Club for the Community Builder Award, Encore Market Engagement for the Large Business Award, Life Best Reward Innovations for the Mid-Size Business Award, Sounds Good AVS for the Small Business Awards, Oakville Academy of the Arts for the Service Industry Award, Blake Wyatt for the Young Professional and Entrepreneur of the Year, and Mauser Packaging Solutions for the Energy Conservation Award. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Member's statements. The member for Willowdale. Hey, hey. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's an honour to rise today to speak about something that is very important to me and to many fellow Willowdalers. Last Thursday, the City of Toronto marked a new beginning the start of something very special, the start of a new era. Mr. Speaker, on March 28th at the Rogers Centre, our beloved Toronto Blue Jays officially kicked off their 2019 season. Here, here. Now, although there is no denying that this may not be the championship season Jays fans are hoping for, whoa, 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 whoa. it is a year to rebuild and invest for future seasons. We've been developing an exciting group of young prospects and others, and they are ready for the big leagues. The World Series, Mr. Speaker, is within our grasps. The Jays are on a path to rebuild on a sustainable and practical timeline. Oh. They need to make some tough decisions now to make sure that the team is competitive down the road. Is that an analogy? It's incredibly important to so recognize, as the managing staff and the front office does, that to pave the way for prosperity, sometimes you have to make hard choices, transform, and think outside the box. Huh, Under the leadership of the new manager, Charlie Montoya, the Jays will gear up for the new season of baseball. Not only are the Jays Toronto's team, they are Ontario's team, and indeed Canada's team. Here, so here. I invite my colleagues on both sides of the house to, to enjoy the summer as we cheer on the Blue Jays. Go, go Jays, go. Let's play ball. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our time for member statements.